Sports fans and baseball fans, and especially out of the park baseball fans. Today, I am here with the opening day of the 1927 New York Yankees season in out of the park baseball, and I will be the manager and general manager of the New York Yankees. Um, I know you're out there saying, oh, yeah, they're really hard. You gotta, you're taking the 27 Yankees. Well, really, I'm taking the 27 Yankees because I want to see if they play as well and win as many games and out of the park as they did in real life. Because if we look at the, um, let's see, reports, yeah, reports and info. If we look at the preseason predictions, we see that the Yankees are predicted to finish third with an 88 and 66 record in the American League. And not only do we not win the American League, now the Athletics did actually finish in second behind the Yankees in real life, but they finished 16 games behind them. But not only are we going to finish behind the Athletics according to this, <coughs> but we are also going to finish behind the Senators who are going to win 90 games. Apparently. So, uh, and you can see the National League is supposed to be won by the New York Giants, although the Pittsburgh Pirates, I think, actually won the National League in 1927. But we're not concerned about the National League. We're concerned about the American League because that's where our Yankees are. So I will be playing the game from time to time. I will throw a game up like I'm going to do today, but then I will, you know, play ahead into the season, and then we will show various games throughout the season, uh, hoping this is more interesting than some of the other seasons that I had thrown um, uh, videos up for and out of the park. I know that the Pirates, the 1980 Pirates season, is quite popular, um, or at least as popular as might be expected with Out of the Park on my channel. Um, but some of the other seasons aren't, so I'm trying this one to see if this sparks a little bit more interest. So um, the I can tell you that the uh, Yankees lineup, if we look at, like, for instance, the pitching staff, the starting rotation is Herb Pennock, George Pipgrass, Wade Hoyt, and Urban Shocker, pretty much what the real Yankees had. And if we look at their lineup uh, versus uh, right-handed pitching, we see that that's Bob Musial, Tony Lazari, Lou Gehrig, Babe Ruth, Pat Collins, Earl Combs, Mark Koenig, Joe Dugan. No real surprises there and probably roughly the same. And it is versus left-handed pitching. So there's Really no surprises there. And then you've got like Ray Moorhart on the bench and Mike Gazella and Ben Pascal. You got Julie Ware. I don't know who Julie Ware is. Um, Cedric Durst. So, I mean, these are actual 1927 New York Yankees. So, so far, there have been no changes made to the team. Um that make it different than the actual 1927 Yankees. And there shouldn't be because I'm the general manager, but I have actually seen with teams that I've had in the past where I've been the general manager, where somehow trades and um, trades and, uh, you know, changes to the roster are made with, by, you know, without my consent or without my knowing. But um in this one, though, we don't have a, like, if we go, like, um, I, I may have shown you that with my 1901-1902 Chicago Cubs, that there's a reserve list that I can shuffle players between the major league club and the reserve list because there were no minor leagues yet. Well, in 1927, there were also no minor leagues yet, or at least I don't think there were. Uh, but if we go to rosters and transactions, you can see not only are there no minor leagues, but there's also no reserve list. So I have the players I have. I can't shuffle anybody 
back and forth between anywhere. Uh, that's probably good, though, because supposedly I should have a very good team. But anyway, we will, with that, we will get on. This is, the, like I said, this is opening day. So we will get on with the game against the Philadelphia Athletics and see if we can beat them. Pitching for them is Lefty Grove. Pitching for our, uh, for the uh, 2070 Yankees will be Herb Pennock. And uh, that lineup looks like exactly the lineup I want to have. So let's start the game and see what we can do. At home against the Athletics. Herb Pennock out there pitching, and he's going to pitch to Max Bishop. Now, Max Bishop got on a lot. He walked quite a bit. He was very famous for walking. So let's hope he doesn't walk Max Bishop. He doesn't, and Bishop hits it to center field. And over the center fielder's head, nice. That's exactly what we did not want happening. All right, so they have a man at second with no outs, and Sammy Hale is up. Pennock off to a pretty bad start here, but he gets a pop out to second. So there's one down man still at second, and now Ty Cobb? Are you kidding me? All right, we're going to walk Ty Cobb. No. <laughs> now let's pitch to Ty Cobb. Let's see what happens. All right, we struck out Ty Cobb. I don't know how often that's going to happen. And now Al Simmons, and this dude was serious, too. You, you don't really want to. And he gets a base hit that probably is going to knock in a, the go-ahead run, and it does. I was thinking of walking Al Simmons, but really this whole lineup is pretty brutal. Now Mickey Cochran is up. Again, a pretty brutal lineup. But we do get him, so the athletic score once. I suppose we should be happy about that. That it was only once. Tony Lazari is up. And he's going to walk against Lefty Grove. Nice. And that brings up Bob Musial. And Bob Musial is going to get a base hit in the hole between short and third. And I'm going to hold him up. Because we got some big hitters coming up. Like, for instance, Lou Gehrig. Who is up right now. And walks. Nobody out, and the base is loaded against Lefty Grove. Who would have thought that? And the Babe is up now, Babe Ruth, and he walks and forces in the tying run. one nothing. we haven't even, I don't, well, we've gotten one hit, I think one hit. Pat Collins, our catcher, is up. And Pat Collins is going to rip a base hit. And that makes it 2-1 to one Yankees. And now, here comes Earl Combs, the center fielder. And he is going to pop out to second and get into a, hit into a double play. Come on. Two outs, runners are at the corners with Mark Koenig up. Probably the worst guy on the team, but he gets a base hit and knocks in a run, and I am going to say no. And that brings up Joe Dugan, our third baseman, and we batted around, I think, or we, except for the pitcher. But anyway, Dugan got out, so we have a 3-1 to one lead. Now let's hope Pennock can hold this. And he hits it right up the middle. There's a base hit up the middle for the Athletics. Joe Bowley, the shortstop, is up. Probably their worst hitter, and he is bad down in the lineup. And they get a force at second. We do. We get a force at second for one out. And Walt French... Is uh, I don't remember Walt French. I mean, I am familiar with the early, um, the, the late 20s, early 30s teams, but I don't remember Walt French. Runners at first and second, one away, Lefty Grove. This is exactly what we want, and he bunts it, and maybe he'll get a base hit out of it, but he won't. So, runners go to second and third, but there's two down, and... Pennock deals, and let's see if he can throw him out. No. So the A's slip another run across, and it's 3-2 with Sammy Hale up. And Sammy Hale with a butcher boy up the middle gets a base hit and an infield hit. And that ties the score at three with Ty Cobb up. 
And Ty Cobb should fly to center, and that is going to be that. But they tied the game. The Athletics did. Again, the Athletics were a very good team in 1927. Um, not taking anything away from them. Pennock at the plate, and he may have no. He's thrown out. Uh, Lefty Grove is going to deal to the top of the lineup now, and there's a base hit. So Lazari gets himself a base hit, which brings up Bob Musial. And they're going to get a force at second, which makes it two outs for us here in the second inning. And Lou, sweet Lou Gehrig is up, and he is going to hit into a force. So no runs for us, 3-3, three, three, top of the third. Pennock dealing to um, Al Simmons now. And there's going to be an error on Garrett. Come on. And we're just going to deal. We're just out there dealing, and he's going to try to bunt, looks like. No, he strikes out. So one down, Jimmy Fox, Jimmy Double X Fox is up, and he looks like he's flying out to center. One down, or two down, and... Uh, Joe Bolia. Joe Boley is going to be thrown out, and we hold the Athletics to the first zero inning they've had to deal with this game. And Babe Ruth, the Babe, is up. And he walks. That brings up Pat Collins, the catcher. And he is going to ground into a double play. Thank you. And uh, Earl Combs at the plate. And Earl Combs is out. So we're still in a tie game at three. In the top of the fourth, um, Walt French is the batter against our man Pennock. And let's hope they can throw him out, and they do. Uh, Lefty Grove, and he's got to swing away here because there's nobody on. And we're going to throw him out, and that's good. Maybe we'll hold him to a second zero run inning with Max Bishop up. And Max Bishop rips another hit. He got a double to lead off the game, and now he's got a single. And Sammy Hale is up. Sammy Hale's going to get a base hit. All of a sudden, Pennock, the wheels are falling off. And Combs threw a little rainbow into third. So, Ty Cobb is up. You don't like this at all. They walk Ty Cobb, which probably isn't the worst thing in the world, but Al Simmons is not a guy you want to fool around with, and he flies out to left field. So, we will go to the bottom of the fourth, in a 3-3 tie with Mark Koenig up at the plate. And there's an error. Koenig is aboard with an error, and I, the pitcher might be up next. Or maybe Joe Dugan. No, Joe Dugan's up, so I'll swing away with Dugan. But he is going to probably ground into a double play, and so now that does bring up Penna. And Pennock is going to pop out to short. So, still tied at three. The pitchers have settled down. And the offenses have seemed to go dormant. But we walk Cochran to lead off the inning. And then there's a bunt. We're not going to get the lead runner, but we will get Cochran. Or um, the, the batter after him. Joe Bowley. Joe Bowley up, man, at second. One out. Looks like that's going to be a pop-out to Dugan, and it is. And that brings up Walt French. And Walt French is going to get a base hit and knock in the go-ahead run. My God, it's 4-3 Athletics. Again, <laughs> I shouldn't be so surprised this was a good team. I mean, it's not like we're playing a crappy team like the St. Louis Browns or something. 
So it's 4-3. We're losing here in the bottom of the fifth. Um, Lazari is up. He strikes out. Yeah, and we are facing Lefty Grove, so. There's an out, and Lou Gehrig is up. Lou Gehrig rips a hit, and now the Babe comes up after him. And the Babe strikes out. All right, so Panic is back out there to deal. This time to Bishop again, who has two hits on the day. And that looks like it's going to be a third, because that dude can motor. All right, we're going to do a pitch out, try to hold Bishop where he is. Okay, obviously they're content to bunt him over. But there's two strikes, three, two count, and he rips it down the line for a double. So that's going to be another run for the Athletics. And they are ahead 5-3. You would not know this was the 27 Yankees. Although, again, very good team that they're playing and a very good pitcher. Runner at third. One down. Al Simmons up. And he's going to get a pop-out to Lazari. Nice. Two down. Runner 90 feet away. We can throw him out. It's all right. We do. It's only 5-3. Bottom of the sixth, though. Time is running out here. Pat Collins. Up at the plate. Earl Combs is up. Earl Combs with a base hit. I might want to get somebody up in the bullpen because if the pitcher comes up this inning, he's gone. We will get Bob Shockey up in the in the bullpen. And up steps Mark Koenig. And Mark Koenig is going to fly out to right. Two down. Joe Dugan at the plate. And Joe Dugan is out, flies out. So I'm going to sit um, Shockey because he would be tired by the time I would get we would get back out there. And I want Panic to get through this inning so that I can pinch hit. Although we'll see if that even happens. He is starting to get tired, but he's not gassed yet. And they did a hit and run, moved the runner to second. One down with Walt French at the plate. And that's going to be an error by Lazari. Are you kidding me? All right. I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't play the infield in. I just don't do it. So... But they struck out trying to bunt. So Max Bishop is up. If we can get him here, we're still only down by two. And Lazari throws a little lollipop over to first and doesn't get Bishop. So now we're losing 6-3. We're losing by three runs. And Lazari finally makes a, a good play, an actual good play. So, um, yeah, Pennock is up. I'm going to warm up Miles Thomas, because at this point it really doesn't matter who's warming up. And uh, we have a lefty on the mound. So we want a right-handed batter, and a lot of these guys are right-handed batters. We'll go with Mike Gazella. Pinch hitting. And he's going to fly to right. And it's, it's played out there. Um, Tony Lazari. 
could maybe make up for some of the boneheaded plays he's done, but now he doesn't. And Bob Musial. And that is going to be an error. He's on by an error. We've got a little life here. One man on, two down. Lou Gehrig. Lou, sweet Lou Gehrig is going to fly out. Thanks, Lou. Shallow fly, and that's the side. Well, I don't think we're going to win this one, people. I just don't think it's going to happen. Miles Thomas will come out to pitch to Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb rips one down the line. Of course, this was 1927, so I believe this was near the end of Cobb's career, so he wasn't quite the dangerous hitter that he was previous to this. One down, and Mickey Cochran is up. Mickey Cochran throws the man out at first. Runner at second, two down. Jimmy Double X Fox is going to fly out to center, hopefully. And Combs plays it. And we have our last chance here. Or no, no, second to last. We're bottom of the eighth right now. Babe Ruth is up. The Babe. Born in Baltimore. And he's going to get on by an air. I'll take anything at this point. Brings up uh, Pat Collins. And he walks. Now we got, it's looking like the first inning. We got two on with no outs. Let's keep it going. Earl Combs. Earl Combs doubles it down the line. We may tie this game up. We may end up tying this game up. It's 6-5 right now, but we've got a runner 90 feet away. And Mark Koenig is up. I'm going to get the bullpen going again because we may actually need it. We'll get, you know what, we're going to, I'm going to get uh, Dutch Ruler up. And we have Koenig at the plate. And Koenig hits the ball the other way, and he's thrown out. So that's the first out. Joe Dugan up. Joe Dugan gets it through a drawn-in athletics infield and ties the game at six. And now we have Lefty. Lefty Grove is getting tired. And we have Miles Thomas up, so we are going to pinch hit for Miles Thomas. Lefty on the mound. We want a righty preferably, and we will go with Ben Pascal. Of course, you remember all these names if you know the 2070 Yankees, and most people do who are baseball fans, and they throw him out. But we did tie the game, so we're now in the top of the ninth. Chance to uh, win this game eventually, but right now... Oh, no, no, we're, okay, that is it. They made the play, and now we are going to the top of the ninth, and Dutch Ruler will come on and pitch. He's pitching to Eddie Collins. Man, Eddie Collins was a tough customer. And he, and he shows it by getting a base hit. We are going to pitch out to make sure Collins doesn't, all right, so he's content to sacrifice him over. The, really, this sacrificing crap that the athletics are doing, it really doesn't help them. But now they they pull it back and they do a, a base hit. And we're not going to throw that guy out, so he's they, we've got runners at the corners with no out. Ruther is getting jacked, and Jimmy Dykes is up. And we got a double play, so nice. I like the two outs, but they they went ahead by a run. Uh, we do have our big guns coming up in the lineup, though, next time. So uh, Max Bishop is at the plate, and he's going to walk. There's the Max Bishop we know. 
Oh, I need another pitcher. I guess he got injured. I'm going to go with Shockey. And probably he wasn't warmed up. Because I don't know if this game really... Like, even if there's an injury, I don't think the game allows for all the, you know, unlimited warm-ups like they do in real Major League Baseball. They just consider him cold. But we're down by a run. Bottom of the ninth. Bob Musial up against Jack Quinn. The amazing Quinn. And that's a high fly ball, but he plays it. Up steps Lou Gehrig. And he walks. Great. So we got Babe Ruth up with a man on. And he pops out. Come on, Babe. That leaves it up to Pat Collins. I don't, and really, I don't want to do that. But he is going to be out, and we lose the game 7 to 6. But again, that was a good athletics team, and we were. Facing their um, their uh, their ace, so we are zero and one, as you can see on the year, and we'll finish the day up, and that will be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.